Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion for Sunday the 13th of June. It's really good to be with you this morning. Welcome. Uh, so for our Holy Communion service this morning we have two readings. Sometimes I only do one for the morning communions but we're going to have both readings today because they're both sort of related. Uh, so we've got Ezekiel chapter 17 verses 22 to 24 and Mark chapter 4 verses 26 to 34. So uh, do follow those along in your Bible if you would like to when we come to them. And so we pause ourselves for a minute as we begin. We meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. We pray, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We have not always worshipped God our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit our Guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so may the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins and assure you of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then in the collect prayer for the day, for the second Sunday after Trinity, Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So our first Bible reading this morning comes from uh, Ezekiel chapter 17 and is, uh, starts at verse 22. And this is Ezekiel telling a little parable of his own. Thus says the Lord, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it, in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our Gospel reading is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, beginning at verse 26. And again, Jesus is telling some parables. So hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground. And would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, he does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, and then the head, and then the full grain in the head. 
but when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because his harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? What parable will we use for it? It's like a mustard seed, which, when sown on the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today marks the end of the beautiful Burial Grounds Week, a week of various sort of activities around the country. Um, and in particular, the way that we've been engaging it with it, or are engaging with it, is through the Church's Count on Nature uh, scheme, which is a, a national survey of churchyard wildlife and plants and trees. And the idea is to add them to uh, the National Biodiversity Database. And so yesterday at St Mary's, we, um, we gathered, a few of us gathered to survey all of the the wildlife and I didn't actually count how many things we found but it was an awful lot when you start looking at it uh, so from little little creepy crawly things to great big trees to birds flying overhead to uh, plants uh, some that were growing wild some that have been planted or uh, sort of maintained and it's incredibly uh, diverse churchyard and we're doing the same at St Peter's this afternoon so between two and four if you want to join us you're very welcome to come up to St Peter's churchyard and help us to count to survey all the wildlife that we'll find there. Our churchyards are amazing places for for wildlife and the wildlife that's in our churches it sort of it reminds us it speaks to us of God and many people many many people come and visit our churchyards through the year sometimes to visit a particular grave or sometimes uh, particularly for St Mary's or for St Peter's as well I think but if they're sort of on a walk and they'll stop us somewhere to rest for some people it's a place to come and to pray. Our churchyards are amazing amazing places and we can see glimpses of that in those various parables that we heard in our Bible readings today. Ezekiel tells a story about a sprig becoming a huge tree Mark tells that well-known story about the tiny mustard seed being planted and growing up into a great big shrub or tree where the birds can nest in its branches. And they're both stories about God making small things, uh, great things grow from small beginnings. And they're saying about the work of the, the kingdom of God. And we can join in with that work. But actually, I think they're also told because this, the idea of a, a tree is so ingrained into human consciousness. And we're so, particularly in Jesus' time, and perhaps less so today, but we, we see parables in the world around us and God can speak to us through the world around us. Um, I've been reading uh, a book called The Great Conversation by Belden Lane, which I might have mentioned before. It's one of the, my favourite books that I've ever read. I'm still sort of chugging my way through it a, a chapter at a time. Uh, but he talks about a cottonwood tree uh, so he's writing from America. So he talks about a cottonwood tree, which is growing in the park just across the road from his house. And he talks about this tree, which he calls grandfather, as being his spiritual companion. So when he's uh, going for a difficult time, he goes and sits under the tree. Uh, or when he's um, going for a joyful time, he goes and sits under the tree. When he just wants some quiet to pray, he goes and sits under the tree. And the, he and the tree have sort of share in this spiritual journey together. And reading it in that book, it reminded me of a poem that I wrote last year, which is sort of along the same lines. So I thought I'd just finish with that. And as I read this, I encourage you to think about maybe it's a tree in one of the churchyards. Maybe it's a tree that you know in your garden or uh, somewhere else. Uh, but the way that actually the, the beauty of God's creation, special places within God's creation can, um, can be spiritual companions to us. And our churchyards are really significant places for that. And they're sort of designed around that. But it doesn't have to be in a churchyard. So it could be anywhere. Uh, so this is a, a poem. I can't remember what I called it, actually. I didn't write down the title here. Um, but it's a poem about trees, anyway. 
my memory is a woodland grove of trees who down the years have joined with me in prayer for such a long time i was unaware of quite how deeply my roots joined with these companions who while steadfast in their place have walked with me on paths of pain and grace there was the hawthorn clinging to the rocks where i sought shelter from the driving rain the fragile birch outside the window pane where we would pray beneath the tower blocks the chestnut lightning scarred yet resolute into my prayers these trees have taken root so now as i seek stillness for my praying i find their rustling leaves their branches swaying amen And so, the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so we come to our prayers of intercession, and I've got some some prayers now which are based on uh, John's vision at the end of the book of Revelation of a, an earth that is renewed by God's grace. And as we pray, we perhaps think about places in our world, places in our uh, community that have been damaged by pollution, by misuse, by climate change. We think about the loss of biodiversity around the world. We think about the gathering of the G7 leaders at the moment this weekend down in Cornwall and their responsibilities in leading the world in tackling climate change, biodiversity loss, environmental crises. And so we pray. Creator God, we believe the promise of your word, that heaven and earth will be renewed. As we look at the planet you have made, we see pollution and destruction, carelessness and mismanagement. Yet we believe you bring life from death and that you want to partner with us in restoring your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for governments and businesses the powerful and the influencers, that their priorities would change and the good of all creation would come before greed and self-interest. May the resources you have given be used responsibly, shared with equity and processed sustainably. Make us mindful of every creature, plant and habitat, each a valued part of your creation. Make us conscious of every nation, people group and generation each made in your image. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who work in nature, for farmers, gardeners and rangers, and every hand that seeks to shape and protect your world. Use the gifts and passions of ordinary people to make a difference. And we pray for ourselves, that our spending power, our voices, our everyday actions would be empowered by your spirit and contribute to the healing of your planet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We look forward to the day when the river of life will flow as clear as crystal. We choose to work for the day when the tree of life will bear fruit and its leaves will be for the healing of the nations. We choose to live now in anticipation of eternity on a renewed earth, creation no longer cursed, with you, God, 
at the centre of it all. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And so we offer one another a sign of peace and do share those words in the comment. Peace be with you. So, the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and with all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O God. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners. And with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends. And taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, and honour, and glory, and power, be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And so, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, 
We are one body because we all share in one breath. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that Christ died for you yet still lives for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. In the body of Christ. In the blood of Christ. Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth, until our joy is complete in heaven, and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me for our Holy Communion service this morning. And um, don't forget we have... Uh, services in church, half past nine at St Peter's, 11 o'clock at St Mary's. And then this afternoon, uh, between two and four in the churchyard at St Peter's, we're going to be counting uh, all of the, the nature that we can find. So do come and join us if you're able to pop up at any point during that time. And we're going to con uh, finish at four o'clock with a very short service of thanksgiving. Uh, so if you fancy coming and singing a hymn or two uh, and giving thanks for all of the nature in our churchyards, then... Do do that and um, it'd be lovely to see you. And then we also have our evening prayer online uh, this evening at half past six. So whatever the rest of your day holds, I do hope and pray that it's a good and a blessed one. Take care everyone. Bye.